my name is Stephanie Holmes. I am the CEO of The Money Finder, and I'm actually located in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. So it's a bit of an interesting thing about how long our company's been in business. Um, so I started as a financial advisor, and so The Money Finder was my financial advisory firm for about 10 years, and I sold it in 2011 and started testing what training financial advisors would be like. So the company as a training company's been around since 2011, so it's about five years old, but the actual training program we sell and all of the way we're growing is only two years and a, and a little bit, a couple of months, so about 20 six months something like that with the money finder I'm so excited because we started in 2013 with just me and that's when we started putting things online and using Infusionsoft and things like that um, but it was just me I had a virtual assistant and me um, we went a year later we had five people a year after that we had eight people and uh, about three years later about right now we've got uh, 17 full-time people as of Monday which is so exciting and our revenue growth since that same period of time is 750 percent so by the end of this year we'll be making over three million dollars and we're recurring revenue so you know we make that money over and over and over again so we're growing really rapidly and we're good size um, and the really interesting thing I think about us is that we work entirely remotely from home in four provinces two countries and four time zones so the Money Finder is a pretty unique company. I don't know uh, if you're listening to this, you're watching this, if you've ever gone to see a financial advisor. Most people have that experience or their parents have gone, they know a little bit about it, but they go expecting what? Financial advice. What ends up happening is they leave with products, which are also important, but that's not financial advice. So I was an advisor for 10 years. I got really frustrated by the fact I was told I was gonna help people. I was like, yes, I wanna be an advisor because I get to help people. This is gonna be awesome. And then they told me how to sell life insurance and then they stopped talking and I went, wait, what? And so I went back to my managers and I said, hey guys, you know, I'm running into clients. They make $100,000 a year or more. They're doing really great, but they don't know where their money's going. And I, I can't be like, well, just buy some life insurance, you'll be perfectly fine. That's not how it works. Um, so I went in to see my managers and they patted me on the top of my head like I was a cocker spaniel and they said, aren't you cute? Don't be so naive. If people don't know where their money's going, it's not your problem. That might not have been my fault, but it's everyone's problem when we don't know how to use our money. And if we look at the economy of any free world nation, we will see that there is a challenge with spending and debt and how we manage our cash flow. And if math was the problem, then everybody with a grade six education would be perfectly fine. And that is not the case. So what the money finder decided to do was if I couldn't find a course or a structure or a method to learn to make it a normal thing that my clients would come to me and get advice about debt and spending and behavior with their money, if if no one would do it for me, I would do it myself. At The Money Finder, we have eight core values, and I'm not gonna go into all of them because one is my favorite. It's so my favorite that some of my colleagues have even stolen it, and I happily allow them to thief it and share it with the world, and that is that work should be fun. And if you don't find the work you do feels a lot like play, then you have to start refining what you're doing with your life because work should be fun. So my three best tips for other small business owners out there would be one, stop doing. So all the things that you do in your day that you tell yourself, well, no one else but me can do this, or I have to work every day because somebody has to do this and I do it better and I can't trust anyone to do it. If you're doing a lot of tasks, you've really got to figure out how to stop. Um, because most everything you should be doing as a leader has to do with setting the vision of your company, figuring out how to remove barriers, and turning your people into leaders and magnets of amazing other people. That's really all you should be doing. So if you're doing all the radio shows, if you're doing every podcast, if you're making every slide, if you're doing all the copy editing, if you're writing every blog post, 
you are really going to always be stuck. You will be your own biggest bottleneck. So you gotta get yourself out of the way. The first way to do that is to stop doing. And some people say, well, I don't have the revenue to hire people to do. You know what, you can do that in piecemeal and it doesn't take long. If you're really good at what you do, if the company really has a good product, it won't take you long to realize that taking that little leap of faith for a couple of months, and that's really all most good employees are gonna need you to pay them before they start to repay the company with productivity. If you just take that little leap of faith, you'll find very, very fast that what you've done is you've created yourself some space. Because that's the next tip I'm gonna give you. So my second biggest tip would be to create blank space. And I mean blank space in your appointment book, I mean blank space on your whiteboard, I mean blank space. Something where there's nothing yet and you protect it like your life depends on it and your team or anyone who works with you as a contractor should be taught to protect it like it's the most valuable revenue producing time that has ever existed in your schedule. Because when I see somebody telling me how busy they are and they show me their schedule on their phone, they're like, yeah, I got this interview and that interview and I'm talking to these people and I, I'm doing all this stuff. I just think, oh no. Oh no, it's my greatest nightmare. You can't think. And your greatest job to be a great entrepreneur and a great founder of a great company and to become a great CEO and to grow and multiply people and have the impact on the world you're capable of, you need space to think. And so I love this. This is something I do. And anybody who's listening to this, if you think, oh, I can't do that, I'm too busy. Guess what? Guess who hears you every time you say you're busy? You do. You hear, I'm busy. And your brain freaks out. It goes, oh my goodness, we're so busy. We better freak out. So stop that little voice. If that little voice says, hey, you're too busy, just say, be quiet, little voice. Just stop it. Just close it down. Look in your calendar right now while you're watching this and find the next day that either is open or has things you can move and be ruthless with what you're willing to move around. So meetings with your team can be moved and adjusted to a new rhythm. So I take a day a week off every week to think. It's called my thinking day, it's on Thursdays, and any day I'm in the office and not traveling, I am literally thinking all day. And there are days where I've stared at a blank whiteboard for probably too much of the day. But those are the days when I connect with the team the next day, I've usually come up with my most brilliant idea. And those thinking days, protecting that time, allows you to carve away some of that doing, because you have to, to have the time to think. And so then the last, tip I would give a small business owner, the third tip, would be to learn to decide. Um, at ICON this year, um, if anybody was paying attention, a lot of the slides said, decide to succeed. And I haven't seen anybody call attention to it, but I think it's brilliant. Because the Latin uh, background for the word decide means literally to cut off, to let go, to stop to go in a specific direction. And so with maniacal focus, you should be deciding to only do the things that have impact on your life, on your purpose, on your mission, on your clients, and on your family, and if, on your team. If that's not what the task you're doing at the moment is offering you, it doesn't belong there. So get really good at cutting everything off that doesn't fit and focus. So those three tips again are to make sure you stop doing to create some space to think and protect it with your life. And finally, to start deciding to do the things that have impact. And so what I want you to do right now is just go create the space to think. Make a day on your calendar empty, the middle of your whiteboard blank, and that notepad in front of you should have nothing in it.